it's time to crack open the torture chamber once again and look at 10 more of the worst punishments ever designed to be worse than death. And we'll start with one that wasn't designed to kill at all, at least not for a while. Number 10. Branding There are few greater tools in criminal justice than shame. A clever judge or two might have sentenced a drunk driver to stand on a street corner with a sign professing his crime, and who could forget Cersei Lannister being marched around in her infamous shame parade? But what if someone wanted the shame to go on forever? What if a particularly sadistic judge or ruler wanted to make sure that wherever the convicted went, people would know they were a traitor, a thief, or a heretic, and treat them accordingly? That's where a common farm tool comes in handy. Branding has a simple use in most farms to ensure everyone knows who cattle belongs to if it gets loose. A few seconds with a hot iron, some loud mooing, and the farmer's property is secure. But it wasn't limited to that. During the time of slavery, sadistic owners would do the same thing for the same reason, to make sure everyone knew their slave was their property, and in the past, criminals would be given a brand to make sure everyone knew their guilt, and often the specifics of the crime. In the 16th century, those deemed heretics against the Catholic Church were branded with a cross. And in the New World, the torture got more specific. Branding was commonly used in early North American colonies to mark those deemed trouble, and you would literally get a scarlet letter. People convicted of adultery got the letter A, burglars and blasphemers got B, which might lead to some explanation, and those guilty of public drunkenness got the letter D, which seemed rather harsh for a night of partying. With no way to hide the scar, for the rest of your life you'd be marked as a criminal and treated accordingly, which could mean being excluded from polite society. Or in some cases, it might mean being sought out for a wild night. It's not the only torture you were supposed to survive, and in Europe, they got creative. Number 9. The Spanish Boot During the Middle Ages, torture was disturbingly common as a way to extract information, but many of the tortures stood the risk of ending the interrogation way too early and sending the truth to the grave with the victim. So how do you keep a victim alive long enough to break them down for information? You torture an area of the body the person can live without, but would really like to keep. A popular choice? The legs, which can take a lot of punishment for a long time, and so some particularly sadistic Spanish torture designers came up with a shoe that's never in fashion. Even the most daring fashionista will want to avoid wearing the Spanish boot. But the Spanish didn't come up with the first prototype. That honor went to the Scots, who designed it out of rawhide. You soak the garment, wrap it around the victim's foot, and then heat it over a fire, causing the rawhide to drastically contract and crush the victim's foot, causing dislocated bones. This was good for inducing pain, but not causing serious damage. The British improved the model with wooden boards, but the Spanish designed a version out of iron, with the ability not just to hurt the victim, but to crush their feet beyond repair. And it turned out that it was a very effective way to get information. First, the victim's lower leg and foot was strapped into the iron boot, then wedges were placed in between the casing and the flesh, and hammered in brutally. With each wedge between the hard iron and the soft flesh, more damage was done to the victim's leg, and they'd become very willing to tell the interrogators whatever they wanted to know. Of course, the torture wasn't necessarily over then either. Torturers would like to force the victims to walk in the boots or pour hot liquid into the casing to increase the pain. The torture was survivable, but in the days it was most commonly used, those who suffered it for an extended period would often die of infection or be permanently disabled from the crushed bones. This next one was probably one of the rarest execution methods of all time, fortunately. Number 8. The Brazen Bull the time was ancient Greece, and the city of Acragas in what's now Sicily was ruled by a man named Phalaris, a tyrant known for his love of creative execution methods and showing off his power. He wanted a new star attraction. One of his subjects, Perilaus, took up the task and produced a truly sadistic final act for the unfortunate victim, in the form of a giant metal bull. But this was no ordinary statue. The bronze figurine would serve as a cage, with a door in one side, and the condemned would be locked inside. Then a fire would be lit, and they would be burned alive for the whole court to watch. But this wasn't just a standard burning. Legend says that the bull had an acoustic device inside that would make the scream sound like a bull's cry. It lived up to the demands of the tyrant, but be careful what you wish for. The tyrant, Phalaris, was impressed. So impressed, in fact, that he wanted to see it demonstrated right away. But rather than find a petty criminal to execute like he normally did, Phalaris ordered Perilaus placed inside himself and lit the fire. Sure enough, Perilaus began screaming and Phalaris was satisfied that the system worked, and he had his new favorite designer taken out, still alive, and given a great reward. Wait, no, that would make sense. Instead, he had the guy who just built him his new favorite device thrown off the top of a hill to his death. Not the best retirement plan. And the bull got quite a workout over his reign. 
Phalaris was big on showmanship and the device delivered. According to reports of the time, it spewed out impressive plumes of smoke as the condemned burned, and the bones that were left were reportedly made into jewelry by the Mad King, like a normal person would do. It became his favorite form of entertainment until he was overthrown and became the bull's final resident. No prototype of the bull has ever been found, leading some historians to believe it to be a propaganda tale made up by his enemies, but the accounts are so descriptive and graphic that others say it's entirely believable for a mad king to create such a torture. It was fast and brutal, but to the east, some torturers preferred it slow. Number 7. Ling Chi a knife is one of the most common methods to execute someone, and it could be as simple as a fast cut to the throat. Brutal and efficient, but efficient was not what the executioners in China around a thousand years ago had in mind. For those guilty of especially heinous crimes, such as treason, a punishment known as the death of 1,000 cuts awaited them, and it wasn't an exaggeration. For those punished in this way, the goal was to keep them alive indefinitely, in agonizing pain as the torturer removed parts of them with a knife, and this punishment had another horrible element to it, because it wasn't just a punishment for the body, it was a punishment for the soul. According to Confucian principles, cutting the body or altering it was a sin against the principles of respect for one's parents. After all, they gave you that body. So by altering the body in this manner, the executioners would keep the condemned from being whole in the afterlife. And this was usually a public affair. The condemned would be tied to a wooden frame in public and the executioner would go to work. They would cut away the flesh from the body, usually from non-critical areas like the legs first, and the victim would be left to linger, often with onlookers jeering and throwing things at them, and often the victim would be left begging for death. So what brought an end to this torture? How long it went on depended on how bad the crime was and how sadistic the executioner was. Some would rather quickly take pity on the convict and cut their throat after only a day of torture, while others could keep their victims alive for weeks. And as usual, hello Madame Guillotine, an execution weapon invented for the worst of the worst soon spiraled out of control. It was intended for treason, but soon emperors started using it against anyone they wanted to make an example of. Soon, even the family members of their political enemies could be subjugated to the torture. People started getting horrified, and eventually the practice was outlawed, but not before it became one of the most iconic and disturbing visuals out of Imperial China. It wasn't the only horrible punishment that took it slow. Number 6. Death by Boiling Ah, soup. Is there anything that smells better than a meat broth bubbling away on the stove? What's cooking? Oh my god. That's right, back in the Middle Ages, they were making human soup regularly. Not for consumption, but for punishment. It all started back in England, which introduced the penalty of death by boiling as punishment for murder by poisoning. Why such a cruel punishment for one specific method of murder? Because that was the preferred method of assassinating kings at the time. And King Henry VIII wanted to make sure no one got any ideas. And naturally, once someone got the bright idea for a new torture method, it started spreading. And that meant horrible things for anyone convicted. It was one of the simplest execution methods around. All you needed was a large cauldron and a bunch of rope to keep the condemned from getting free. Oh, and a liquid. Water was the most common, but oil, tar, or tallow burned hotter and faster and created a more dramatic show. The restrained convict would be placed into the cauldron, the liquid would be poured in, and the flame underneath it would be lit as the water slowly started boiling. And this could take a while, and the convict would not die immediately. Remember what they say about frogs in boiling pots? If the bath was water, it would just start like a sauna. If it was a stickier substance, it would get a lot more unpleasant a lot faster. But one way or another, eventually the liquid would get so hot that it would start burning the skin of the condemned, putting them in agonizing pain. Breathing in the boiling steam would start to scald their lungs, and the body would dehydrate quickly. What would eventually kill them? Probably the shock from the damage done to their body, which would make them pass out and drown in the horrible stew. One way or another, it was a gruesome show that likely put spectators off a of soup for a while, we hope. This one horrible punishment lasted the test of time, but wound up with a nightmarish legacy. Number 5. The Gas Chamber how to execute people has always been a tricky question. Beheading? So messy. Hanging? There's always a chance of failure. Firing squad? You need to get people with good aim. And as technology marched on, some people thought, couldn't we find a cleaner and foolproof way to do this nasty deed? It started in 1803, when an infamous French military commander executed large groups of Haitian prisoners of war by filling their cargo holds when they were being held with sulfur dioxide, poisoning and suffocating them within minutes. The use of poison gas as an execution method had been invented, and it would only grow from there. But is it truly an easier execution method? Not for the condemned. While it's cleaner and has the highest rate of success of any execution method, for the person in the chamber, it's horrible. 
In single-person executions, the condemned is strapped down to a chair in the room as poison gas, usually hydrogen cyanide, is pumped into the room. The condemned can see the gas as it's piped in and is usually told to breathe in as quickly as possible because they'll fall unconscious faster. If they don't, they're likely to have seizures and lose bodily function as the gas wreaks havoc on their body, and it can take several minutes before they finally die. The convulsions can be severe, with one murderer beating his head so hard against a metal bar that it broke the chair. So, why isn't this system used more? The gas chamber has mostly fallen out of favor as an execution method due to how expensive it is, as well as the risk of toxic gas leaking and poisoning the people around the chamber. It's been replaced by another poison method, the lethal injection, which is usually faster and less painful. But the main reason few people want to see the gas chamber make a comeback is because of its association with Nazi Germany, where the tyrants used it to create a mass execution chamber targeting Jews, Roma, and others deemed inferior or enemies of the Nazi regime. Much like the guillotine, once an execution method is used in mass murder, most people overseeing executions would rather stay away from it. Now let's head to the high seas, because who's better at coming up with evil punishments than pirates? Number 4. Marooning Sometimes the worst thing you can do to someone is leave them to their own devices. Say a pirate's been breaking the rules at sea. Maybe he was caught skimming the top off the treasure or he had a little too much grog and punched the captain. Arr, he's in for a bad time. After locking him in the brig, the captain eventually takes him out as the ship hits land, leads him off the ship to a desert island, and leaves him there to fend for himself. He's just been marooned, and this punishment often amounted to an extended and painful death sentence depending on where he's been stranded, and more thought was often put into this than expected. The island was little more than a slip of land bobbing in the water with nowhere to get shade, nowhere to get food, and no fresh water in sight. The sun beat down endlessly. The water would just make you more thirsty, and there's little hope of rescue. The captain would often give the mutinous pirate some items, a water jug, some food, and a loaded pistol. What that pistol would be used for was entirely up to the pirate. The situation wasn't entirely hopeless. Another ship could come by, but in most cases, the marooned pirate would only last days at most. Of course, this was not always the case. Sometimes, the pirates would drop the exiled sailor onto a larger island, one with shelter, inland springs, and coconuts, and animals. This often came down to the luck of the draw, whichever island the ship came upon first. In this case, a determined marooned pirate could carve out a hard but sustainable life for themselves, hunting, foraging, and building themselves a shelter. Some could last years there until another ship came upon the island, maybe searching for treasure or goods, or maybe dropping off their own mutineer. And if any other ship picked up that survivor, they would likely have a very determined new recruit with a specific pirate captain he would love to declare war on, which is why many pirate captains did not take that chance. Number 3. Walking the Plank It's probably the most iconic image in media of pirates. Someone crossed the captain, maybe a mutineer or a pirate who failed his mission. Maybe the pirates captured a notorious enemy of theirs. One way or another, it's time to walk the plank. As execution methods go, this one's simple as it comes. The condemned is bound and forced to walk on a wooden plank outside the ship. Why would anyone actually take this walk? Because on the other side, the captain's usually brandishing a sword. There's nowhere to go except take that long walk off a short plank and into the water below. So, should all pirates just learn to swim? Well, it's not that simple, and walking the plank was usually a much more direct form of execution than marooning. For one thing, the captive's arms are bound to keep them from fighting back and also to keep them from swimming. If they do manage to get their arms loose and not drown immediately, they're still in turbulent ocean water, quite possibly surrounded by sharks and other predatory animals, and there's still the risk of the ship getting moving and running right over them. If all this goes right and the plank walker survives, they're still stranded in the middle of the ocean, bobbing on the waves with no food or fresh water around. So, how often did this actually happen? If you look at the media, you probably think pirates made people walk the plank on a daily basis. It did happen in real life, but it seems to be reserved for extreme situations. The first event was actually a group of mutineers forcing their officers to walk the plank in the 1760s, and slave ships often did it to their captives. It seemed to be the habit of particularly sadistic pirates, but the visual caught on. In reality, pirates would definitely be hesitant to do it for minor offenses. After all, when running a large ship on a long-range course, every crew member matters, and even captives can be put to work, there's always the threat of the plank to keep them in line. But it may not be the most sadistic seafaring punishment. Number 2. Keel Hauling It was maybe the cruelest fate dealt out by sea captains, and surprisingly, it wasn't the pirates who were doing it. 
Dating back to the time of ancient Greece, it was dealt out by the reputable sea captains. Mutineers, thieves, and pirates were subject to this punishment, which began by tying a line to the sailor's waist. The line was looped below the vessel, and the sailor was then taken and thrown overboard. The sailor would then be dragged below the ship's keel, with the massive vessel bearing down on them and pushing them under the water. But this was so much more than just the world's worst case of waterboarding. While not technically a death sentence, there were many ways it could go badly for the sailor. For one thing, if the ship was moving too slowly, it would drown them before they arrived at the other side and were picked out of the water. Moving their head the wrong way at the wrong time could result in the ship's hull crushing their head and killing them instantly. But the worst part was what lurked under the ship's hull. Barnacles, the small sea creatures attached to the bottom of the ship over the years, giving it a jagged texture. This would often cut the back of the unfortunate sailor to shreds, not only causing agonizing pain, but exposing them to a potentially fatal infection. And while it isn't the most famous punishment of the seas, it might be the harshest. The most famous example of this punishment probably came in Mutiny on the Bounty, where the infamous Captain Blight keelhauls a sailor and causes him to die, which later leads to him being overthrown. However, this was a fictional creation. The only crew members to die on Blight's ship died of natural causes. However, there is ample evidence to suggest that this was a common punishment in the Dutch Navy. Most reports are that it wasn't intended to be a fatal punishment and was considered equivalent to flogging, which indicates that the captains may have overestimated just how hardy the average sailor was. But nothing topped this evil punishment, and it's back to medieval England. Number 1. Hanged, Drawn, and Quartered No surprise, there's no greater crime in most societies than high treason, probably because it threatens the safety of those in power, and they have the power to pass laws giving those who consider it something to fear. And in the year 1352, the current monarch passed a law creating a new punishment for those betraying him. One that wasn't just an execution, it was a spectacle designed to destroy the culprit in full view of the entire community with each part of their execution being worse than the last. Those sentenced to being hung, drawn, and quartered might just beg for death. First, the convicted traitor is tied to a wooden board, which is then tied to the back of a horse. The horse is then ridden through town, dragging the condemned to their final execution place, often as jeering onlookers throw things at them along the route. They're then taken to the gallows and hung, but not in such a way that'll break their neck. They're nearly strangled to the point of death, and then cut down. And that's when the torment truly begins. First, they're castrated, then they're disemboweled, beheaded, and their body is cut into four parts. At some point along the way, they die. But don't let that stop the execution party. This used to be reserved for the worst of the worst, but that wasn't always the case. Another variant for this sadistic punishment was simply quartering, and all you needed was a rope and four horses. The condemned would have their limbs tied to the four horses, with each one attached to a different horse. The horses would then be spooked often by firing a gun or a firework into the air, and the horses would bolt. As they did, the horses would suddenly and brutally pull the limbs off the condemned, often ripping them clean off. Rather than a formal execution for treason, this was often an informal punishment for horse thieves, not approved of by the legal authorities, if there were any, but they certainly weren't going to interfere. It kind of puts picking up trash for community service duty into perspective. Want to see more of the worst punishments ever created? Check out evil punishments designed to be worse than death, or watch this video instead.